right subject is love and joy. I made you a promise when I started. Everything I tell you on this platform, I know from experience. I am not theorizing. When we are told, he who does not love does not know God. For God is love. The Apostle John was not speculating. This is not a conclusion that he reached after years of philosophic contemplation. This was an act of God in self-revelation. God had never revealed himself as infinite love to man. I doubt that man could ever, with all the philosophy of the world, ever come to the conclusion that God is love. God is that. In spite of all the horror of the world, I tell you, true, I know that from experience. Friend, another apostle tells us that though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am a something brass or teaching simple. Then he takes all the gifts of God and compares them to love. And if love is not present, I am as none. I may have all the wisdom of the world, all the power of the world, everything in the world. If I have not love, it is as none. There is no gift of the Spirit comparable to love. And in the end, love is the only thing that really will abide, abide forever. Faith will be realized. Hope will be realized. These are attributes of God. But God is love. He's not an attribute of God. God is love. When you stand in the presence of the risen Christ, you have no other emotion in the world, no other vision. It's simply love. God is love. And when love embraces you, it's only love. And you wear the body, which is the body of the risen Christ, and it's only love. Everything else will pass away, but love will endure forever. He who does not love, does not know, for God is that. And tonight I will tell you certain things that seem incredible. They're all scripture, and all of these may I tell you are true. We are told, let us be persistent in the race as we run it, as we persisted in this race, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was to be realized by him, endured the cross, despising the shame, embraced the cross, despised the shame. I know that to be true. When he nailed himself upon this, I know that to be true. And despise the shame to which you have to go as the speaker. When he did it on you, he embraced it willingly with a joke and despised the shame which he knew he would have to go through. And that was not. And tonight, the things that I will tell you, all from Scripture, you wonder, how can anyone, here is one, he who drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Well, I have a very large selection of Bible and commentaries, and of many 
scholarly works. The exegesis is on all kinds of the 66 books. I have read one where it was read to me. I cannot believe it could be taken literally. But may I tell you, these statements are expected to be taken literally and fulfilled literally. I drink the blood of God. He who drinks my blood has eternal life. I will raise him up at the last day. It doesn't make sense, does it? That's why Myers in that lovely poem would be called St. Paul. Oh, could I tell? He surely would believe it. Or could I only say what I see? How can I care? Or how can you believe it? How? Until he bring it where I have been. Until you see this temple split in two and the liquid golden light at the base of the spine. And as though you put a sponge upon it and every drop is absorbed. You look upon it and the word drink or to eat the flesh or drink the blood is the final thing that concordance as to do it with enjoyment. It's the most impulsive thought in the world if you take it on a certain level. May I tell you, the concordance is right. When you look at it, there's nothing but joy in your being because you say within yourself, I know it is myself. O oh, my divine creator and redeemer. And then coming closer, you fuse with it, absorbing it every little drop like a sponge. And then up like a spiral light into heaven. I will raise you after you have taken my blood. He who drinks my blood, I will raise him up at the last day. And the last day is not Sunday in the remote future. It comes every moment of time to the individual. This thing has happened, but it is still, in a sense, happening. Look to him, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was to be, I was realized by him, embraced the cross, endured the cross, and despised the shame. Everyone will simply have that experience, and when you drink it, it's sheer enjoyment. You don't absorb it with the tongue. I don't put it to my mouth and drink it. I look at it and I know with the infinite joy it's my very being, my creator and my redeemer, and I fuse with it and absorb it as I dry spine would that pool of golden liquid light. And then he tells you, I will raise you up after you have drunk my dust. And I will raise you up at the last day. And up you go right even to heaven. So how to tell it? If one can only tell it, I know there are those who would believe. But how to tell it? If one could receive it. Here in New York City, this past summer, I always call on my friend who would run this wonderful bookstore over the years. In fact, most of my life were at Walton. She was only interested in money. I was going to sell my book because she made a dollar. She had no interest whatsoever in anything I wrote in the books. She had an fabulous diet of metaphysical books. She didn't know the contents of one of them. But she knew where every one was and the price of living. And if she knew your interests and you started in a certain direction, she 
could divert you for a moment while you'll take that book out and rub out the price and put another price in. <laughs> I never corrected her. I caught her doing it with me. She always did it to my wife when my wife went in looking for certain books for me. She knew she would never question the price if she had the book. And she would do it. Why well, were going and she would say, Oh, devil, you certainly do dream, don't you? I said, Mary, these are not demons. These are visions, parallel descriptions of the devil. And she turned something else, if I were taught politics, which I did. If I were taught money, the third out, I did. Then she would have all the ears. But when I began to tell her of a vision, of an experience of mine, Mary had no time for it at all. And this goes back into the twenties. So this year, that is my custom. I thought I'd go and call her Mary. And I say to a friend of mine, for the one night, I haven't had time as yet to go and see Mary. I think I'll go to home. She said, haven't you heard? She said, no. But Mary was killed that night. Killed instantly. And there is no more metaphysical diagram. It used to be called the gateway. She and her husband had no children, were married for 40 odd years, and they went their separate ways. They made lots of money. Mary ran the bookstore, and he lived in the home of the country in Bucks County. There's so many artists and writers living in Pennsylvania. So they would call each other if someone needed something. If she needed someone to go hunting for little books, she'd call Bill and Bill would take the training or riding and do whatever Mary needed. And she occasionally go out to the house. So they never had any feeling that she'd call and freely inquire. No reason for it, so they thought. So many days went by, and he called. He wanted some help, and there was no response. He called all of the day, both the shop and her home in the village on 18th Street, and there was no response. We came on in, went to the home first, with all the uncollected mail. They were said we haven't seen Mary in five days. We went to the shop and right off Madison Avenue and Sister. And here, uncollected mail, and they hadn't seen Mary in five days. The affairs of Mary, five days before, needed something from the grocery store, and it was late. It was just the end of the block. So she went out with a little bit of change first and no identification mark. Nothing on her, but a little change first. Stepped off the curb and the truck moving at tremendous speed, and she was gone instantly. So Bill went down to the police department and inquired about this missing wife of his. And they said, You know, if you find them all, you have a talk with her dead wife and tell you my wife is missing. She had been missing for five days. The cop said to her, after all these things happen all day in New York City, your death describes a woman just like your wife, and she's at the mall. Why did you go and look? So Bill goes to the mall, and there is Mary, unclaimed for five days. Not one moment could I arrest her attention, as I have yours now. Mary made a considerable sum of money out of me. That's all she wanted. And I would have given her any day that I visited, I would say four or five days a week. I'd go around in her life. The most wonderful benefits for life. I think that and the one and only each are the two outstanding libraries in this country that I know. The one called Acres of Books in Long Beach. Well, these are the two fantastic libraries. Mary made this quick departure from this level. Not knowing one word of the great mystery of life. And she had every opportunity over the years to hear from one who had experienced scripture. And Mary wouldn't take it at all. We are told at the very end of his days, Paul turned to Mary and he spent it from morning to night trying to persuade all who would listen to him about Jesus, and using as his argument 
the laws of Moses and the prophets and the songs. And many were convinced by what he said, while others disbelieved. Or very many even give me the chance to disbelieve. Simply to put all sheer facts, all the time. And I tell you, every precept in that book called the Bible is literally true and will one day be experienced by you and fulfilled by you literally, even to the drinking of the blood. And it's not God that I would touch my faith. But when you see it, you know it's the only living reality in the world. It's that which made you alive while you walked this earth. It was the blood of God. And because God became, I may become God. But I was serving to, there was the blood that gave me life. And on that blood, I knew it was myself. For in the blood, there is life. Life is in the blood. Golden liquid living life. And you saw, you become one with it. And then as you're told, then I will raise you up after you drink my blood. And all the stars we get out of this statement is, if I would only read his words and assimilate them and begin to understand them, well then I am eating his flesh and drinking his blood. You will do it literally. I'm not saying you should not understand them. And that is the lowest aspect. The one is intended, that is intended to be taken literally and experienced it. He that drinks my blood has done it. Now he said, because I live, you will live also. See the difference in tense? It's completed. Because I live, that's present, you will live also. He's telling everyone that he addresses. And this is in the 14th of John, that though you seem to be alive, you're really not. Not yet, not until you drink my life. But I have animated you, for I have put my blood beneath you. Unless I die, thou canst not live. But if I die, I shall arise again, and thou with me. So he died. By crucifying himself on me, on you, on everyone. So his blood is in me. But I did not drink until he severed me in two. And then as he severed me in two, I absorbed it. Absorbing it was complete drinking of every drop of blood. And then on the heels of it, you were sent like a serpent, but like a boat of spinal life. Just as you are told in the scripture. So here I tell you, love in you. It was love. You take the word Jesus in scripture, it means God, it means Jehovah. And it means love, for that is the nature of God. That's the ultimate reality. So if you read it, you say love. If the word Jesus offends you, say love. And love says so and so and so, that's all right. And Jesus said so and so, say love. Same thing. Jesus is love. Infinite love. Now here, I asked you for your cases. I want to thank you for the six that have come so far. I will use them as the evening for minutes. One I will use tonight. And the lady gave it to me. She said it happened to her on the night of the 4th of September this month. He said, that I fell asleep, and my body lay asleep on the bed. I found myself looking for something. I didn't know what it was that I should find. But there I am, looking and looking for something. I had to find something. But what it was, I didn't know. Until, in my hand, a face, my left hand, three coins. And I said, not to anyone, just speaking aloud in the dream, should they not be 30 pieces of silver? And the voice answered and said, no. You have the three 
precious ones. And then, as the boy spoke, the three were taken out by head towards the right, one by one, each seven. And as the hand took the first one out, the boy said, This is faith. Took the second one out, that this is hope. Took the last one out, that this is love. And then I awoke. There is the fulfillment of the 13th of Corinthians, first Corinthians. Faith, hope, and love, these three abide, but the greatest is love. Faith will one day be translated into vision, therefore fulfill itself. And hope will be completely realized in the state. But love endures well. It's something that is basic, you can't analyze it. It's something that is altogether God. There's only God and God is that. So she held the three coins. The three precious ones in her head. And she thought in terms of a 30 piece of silver. And the boy said, No, you have the three precious ones. And then it came, and the voice, as she relinquished, she didn't have any choice in the matter, she just took one after the other. And the voice began to speak. So whenever vision breaks out into speech, the presence of deity is a perfect. A stone that's in the third chapter of Exodus and the sixth of Isaiah. When it breaks out into speech, when you're in the presence of vision and speech takes place, then the presence of deity is apparent. So I say every word of scripture you one day will experience. I have experienced it. I've experienced it, and now, night after night, all the lovely things that come after us. Like the 23rd song, who would have thought you took that little? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You make me the light down in the pastures. Would you believe that is the free truth for a man to be spoken? For the last few years in New York City, we were warned not to walk through the park, central park. You were muggings day and night. They said you took your mic in your hands and you entered the park. Professors from Columbia were murdered. Bing, the head of the Metropolitan Opera, he was mugged and stripped with all the money gone right at the very beginning on 59th Street as you entered. And this is where the lights are on. Only at ten at night. But I felt, regardless of all these rumors, I must go through the park. And so I got my daily walk. I started through the park. And I can't tell you how green the grass was. That luscious, luscious green. And it was so thick. And for years, New York has suffered from the lack of rain. And they wouldn't need to walk in the best place. You had asked and they had little signs of the hotels, please do not keep the water running. Don't oh, use it when you have it. And they asked for all kinds of very pertinent things about don't touch the toilet unless you have it. And all these things to save water. It was down to almost 50% of capacity. Well, in the last year, for some wonderful reason, the rains came and the grass was so weak. I can tell you my clue as I walked through the farm and remarked to myself how clean the best is. The following night, this was my experience. I saw my earthly father. He looked about 50 years old. He died when he was 85 in the year 59. But he looked about 50 and radiant and rose. And I was lying on the grass, back on this wonderful stretch of green, luscious grass. And I said to him, I said, Isn't this strange? Only yesterday, I had a dream. I had a dream that I saw this grass 
and remarked to myself how green it was, a falling and a and a wonderful one. And now, here, it is an objective reality, it's a fact. Last night in my dream it was subjective, and now here, it is objective, and it appears to smile. What is objective and what is subjective? Is it not wholly determined by the level on which consciousness is focused? I am telling you in a dream that this is the reality. And what I experienced only yesterday was the dream. And I told them how I had dreamed it. And when I woke back here, I realized on this level what I told him was the dream. And what I told him was the dream was really the fact. Which was the fact and which was the reality. Now who is my fault? We are told in scripture, the whole vast world is seeking the Father. And Christ tells us, I am the Father. He who sees me has seen the Father. The whole vast world is seeking Christ. They are seeking the authority that is imaged as your earthly Father. That seat of authority. That seat of power that you can trust, that you can respect, that power to which you can, be, you can submit yourself, even if it does, and it does sometimes, chase you. And in the world, you think it's a affliction, but still you will submit to it if you can trust it. And what is it? It's the power in our very self that we are seeking. That same power that the Christ of the Gospels claimed himself to be. So when I met my father, I was only seeing the authority that I had found. He was the image, the symbol of that authority that I loved. I always trusted him. I would always submit myself. He was always generous and kind. And here I am, stretched out on the rest, in complete fulfillment of the 23rd Psalm. You make a thing to lie down and feed that to the Lord. But we're told in Scripture, Christ is the Lord. And he calls himself the Father, here's my Father. And I'm lying down, not standing on it, I'm lying down and feed that. And it's so green and so luscious. And night after night, the entire book unfolds as experiences. After the four major ones take place, or they're taking place. It's all behind me. So I'm sharing with you, and to repeat it, how can I tell that anyone, I wouldn't say anyone, but the majority, receive it. How until he brings them where I have been. He takes them to that same level, and then they will know. And they will know all these precepts are to be taken literally and fulfilled. Different. So I tell you, God, who is love, angel, everything is going to pass away. He will simply wither like the grass and simply vanish from the earth. And the earth itself, God, by being you, are completely incorporated to the one being who is God. There is nothing but God. And God is all that. Everything else is an attribute of God. Faith will be fulfilled, hope fulfilled, all the attributes fulfilled. But God is done in Joe's breath. It is man. So here this wonderful story <coughs> of the three coins. I can't tell you my thrill when someone who comes here will have a beat of that nature. And he would share it with me. Very sweetly talked out in a nice written form and gave it. And others I have, I have five others, and they're perfectly marked. And when I come that they're fit, I shall share it with you. And so again I'm going to make an appeal. 
do share your experiences with you. They encourage everyone. This sweet lady you wrote with, her message has gone out tonight to everyone who is here. And you will know that you too will have a similar experience and know that these three qualities were they abide. And the greatest of these came last, and the best is first, and the first is last. Best was not. Comes out of hand best. And these you have the three precious ones. Not the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him who could roar bad by what he said. Well, that's the price of pay owner of the ox. If the ox go to stay, you pay the owner of the slave, not the slave. You pay the owner of the slave. Thirty pieces of silver. If you had the ox. And the ox is a symbol of Christ. And Christ comes to go there. He simply goes him into you like that ox they call the lamb of the life in scripture. An ox goat. And it goes you into moving on to higher and higher levels of awareness. So when he comes, he does not peace. He brings the sword, he brings the ox goat. So when the ox goes someone, one injured, or then thirty pieces of silver that he gives to the owner of that slave. But he wonders, are there not thirty pieces of silver? And the voice answered, no. Three, and you have the three precious ones. These are the three. So when you stand in the presence of the risen Christ, the only precious ask is to name the great thing in the world. And you do name the three. And you also go on to say, but the greatest of the three is love, and that's when love embraces you and you become one with love. And forever, you are one with the body of life, and there's no divorce. But God is now joined together, you and God are one. No man or organization of being could put asunder. You're one with the body of God, and forever, you are that one. When you leave this prayer in the not distant future after that experience, <laughs> you awaken as the very being the whole vast world talks about. While it springs it and they cover in the or the God made on this devil is simply veiled with them. While a veiled with them, no one sees the body that we wear. And so they have to simply guess at the reality behind what you said. How can I bring God to life? How can God have done? Well, God is free. How can I do this body? How can I lie down with green passion? And lie down with green passion tells me I am protected forever. It's the story of God's protection of his anointed one, his event. So your soul, he actually allows me to lie down with green passion. For what? Does it? In All because from now on, no concern about where it comes from. No concern about anything in the future. Just I will let me fly in the passion. An abundance of joys from now on. Just for the day. And then you go on to the people. If I were hungry, I would not take. For the world is mine. And all the world. The cattle on a thousand hills are mine. And so when I am, I will slay an evil. Why tell anyone of my hunger if the world is mine? Well, you have an inheritance that is infinite, that is unspoiled, unfading, when these things begin to happen with you. And the minute you drink the blood, your rapers, and the whole story begins on the resurrection. There will be no Christianity without resurrection. And resurrection without crucifixion is sin, sheer nonsense. How could there be a resurrection without death? For well, God dies. And that's his love for you. It's love for me. Lest I die, thou no canst not be. For if I die, I shall arise again. 
and thou with me. Not as two, as one, yet without loss of identity, of the one who I reign. No change of identity, no change to that wonderful specific individuality. The same self, yet now including a far greater self, and the Lord, who is none other than God the Lord, Jesus Christ. So to include him, I yet remain the being that I am, yes. Without change of identity, you encompass this infinite presence who is Jesus Christ, and you are he, without change of identity. That's the mystery. And the aim only Jesus. Nothing but Jesus. And you are here. Why do you love in yours for that? As told us in the 13th chapter of Corinthians. Everything will pass, but love endures all. So wonder by the three virtues, faith open now. Faith as believing what we see present. Hope is hoping when all things are hopeless. And love is forgiving what is unforgiving. That's love. But everything that you've ever done is forgiven. If I had to expiate my past, as the world teaches, one must, I could never be exonerated, not in eternity. But in that embrace of love, though my sins were there at that moment, I scarred, they were at that very moment made white as snow. And there was complete divine acquittal of all that I had ever done. And I did everything that man could ever do. I had to. Everything that man was capable of doing, I did up to that moment. And he embraced me and it me. And I was divine. And my sins that were then like stone became white as snow. No one can read him. He has said, save himself. We are saved by the grace of God. It's not your own doings, so there's no way to boast the grace of God. Now tonight, take this, we're called upon to imitate God as their children. Now tonight, here is how I would imitate you, what I do. It's told us in the first epistle of John, for chapter. We learn. Because he first loved us. Because implied causation. Our love is response, only response. The cause is God loved me first. Now that apostolic we must now become a personal love. I am. Because God first loved me. Now imitate God as a dear child, as I'm told in the Ephesians. Start to love. I want a response to love, and I start loving the one I will have to start. I expect to come from there, and I don't initiate it. I will wait in vain. I'll wait forever, for I must imitate God as a dear child. Well, I am told, because I live, you will live also, if I must be dead. I live, therefore you will live also. See the change in tense? It may be the guarantee of it. He said, the creation of the great artist, he may be. He said, it marvel. And to whom does he pray to make her alive? He prays to the goddess of love. And asked the goddess to make her act, that he could embrace her and find affection and find a companion in his creation. And love responds. And when love responds, 
Galatea, on this uh, first word is to call a creed to sing. And she calls out the big me. Well, the first word I ever heard and you ever heard is to call our creator sing. Before I could say any or see any, though I couldn't utter the words, I had to be aware of being before I could become aware of being aware of something. I had first to be aware of me before I could be aware of anything. So although I couldn't use words, I was about to talk, you, maybe. No matter what, I became aware of my head moving before my eyes. But I had to be aware of being first before I was aware of a hand or whatever it was moving before my eyes. And so a little child is first aware of me before it becomes aware of anything in this world. So here the first word that the child is really uttering is the name of its creator. Because to be aware of being is saying in the depth of one's being, I am. If I am, then I'm aware. And so I must first be before I can be aware of it. And so as Galatea became aware, she calls her creative thing, and she calls out to me. Here is simply an aspect of this eternal vision. So, if I must imitate God, and the initiative is with God, and I now love because God first loved me, for the imitating, well, they, I'm aware of being. I want someone in my world to respond, to appreciate what I do, and to express that appreciation. Well, then I must start that. I must start expecting that appreciation and go beyond it and hear it as though it were true. I must listen just as though I could, what I would hear were true. Then comes the response. For the world is but an end. The world is only a response of what you are doing. So when I am not loved, then I am not imitating God as a dear child. I am expecting it to originate prayer. It can't originate prayer. It has to originate in me. So the whole vast world is my selfish self. And if God is not, then I love Him because He first loved me as imitating Him. Well, then I see the whole vast world of the love. I want the world to respond in one time. I want to say to my brother Victor, who has made a fortune in this world, a little tiny island called Bobby. You can put four Barbados in Los Angeles and still have room. And he has made a considerable fortune. And he started behind the April. And he said to me, You don't have nobody will you need. Maybe you will. Then they say, What is this good of your success? Then they because I have money, I love money, I don't have money. Oh yes, I have it, I have millions. But I don't have money. I love the use of money. But if I told you what I consider my success and the secret of my success, maybe you will believe that maybe you would, others don't. Because being a successful businessman, they're afraid of him. And they think he's hard. They think he's everything that he's not. And this is what he told me. What do you think he said? He said, my secret is this. I love people. Now they're all afraid of me because I have money. I'm never too busy to see anyone. Regardless of the pigment of their skin, they can survive to hear anyone coming in. If Churchill came, when Churchill was alive and he came, he was sitting in the same seat that my portal would come in. My portal was a seat in my bed. And I really love him. And so he's done it all to believe it. By giving, he's always giving. Not thinking of himself, just simply giving. But he makes a fortune and he can't stop it. It pours and pours and pours. And he tells me his secret is because I love him. 
Now, he doesn't know the Bible, as you do. He certainly doesn't know it as I do. But innately, he knew that God is love. And I love because he first loved me. How he got that I don't know, but he just loves people. And people have to bring in all kinds of information that you can't buy in any other way. You find all kinds of deals because people love it. And yet they're afraid of it. Just as man, not knowing the unknown, is afraid of God, who is in the love. If you ever saw the risen Christ, you wonder how God ever in Germany have ever been afraid of God. When there's not a thing in the risen Christ, but in for the God. Nothing but God. And yet man fears this unseen. You can't see him until he calls you. He hides his face because you went astray and simply served another God and played the harlot with one who was not God by worshiping some false God. Call it by any name, there's only God. And if you go back, one day, he will not hide his face anymore, he will not fail. And you will see him come down. He'll embrace you and you you. And the union is complete and no one can suffer. So tonight you take me in my name and tell you what I've experienced. You start tonight and all right, fall in love with being successful. And success, you always need, the state always needs a man to express it. And so, a man will express it. They'll come into your world, fall in love with being successful. And then many will come, and you'll be successful. Without the effort you think it will take. All these things work almost without effort, if you really believe in God. And imitating as a their child. Why can you everything in the world that we have all so dear, all pass away. But love will not pass away. Because love is God himself. Or that is going to be something. Or sick. I think you will find the story that I will tell a Monday, a very fascinating story, based upon the letter that I received, which he doesn't know as yet, how perfectly it fits in with the visions, my own personal vision, over the past, I would say, 20 years. I mean, not being able to like what's happening in the she may not even come on Monday, that's really mad. But what she wrote in this past week, and how perfectly it fits with the vision that I would tell on Monday, is this drama secular or sin? Are there any questions? Last, uh, last week, now you, you said to uh, seek him out and brood over him. Would you expand on that? Well, if you took what I said tonight, and not just drop it because it's over, and you close the door, brood over what you heard underneath his words. So when I quote scripture, all prophets were inspired by the same script that's told us in the Epistle of Peter. So when you read the four Gospels, like quote the like the book of John, he who drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. But these are his words, and his word is himself, so rule over them. Rule over everything that is said, his precepts are to be taken with him, and he dwells in you, Bill. Tonight I have explained based upon my own experience of what it means to actually drink the blood of God. And the word translated, drink, means with enjoyment. It's not a repulsion. And you can't conceive of anything more repulsive than the orthodox 
Yud Lumad that the taking of blood. For the simple reason, they are trained in orthodoxy. That the animal must be trained in the ball that is all by the taking of the blood. And put the blood, but that's what we call it. They kill the chicken differently from the heathens slaughter the chicken. And they will slag the board and drain all the blood from the earth. So I get all the blood. A race that I was in a Christian environment, we put blood sausages. And well, uh, rare ghost people. And things of that sort. And not to drain the blood. So it has anything to do with that level. No. It's something entirely different. When they know what that blood is, or when the Christian knows what that blood is. What Christian would take it that he would even, even entertain the thought of drinking the blood of Jesus? He wouldn't, would he? Or take this and remember something and take it away. That's not the blood. That would be as simple as shadow of what we give the wheel in joint when they see that man. And it'll absorb every drop. Take no time at all. And you do it freely. You're so thirsty for it. And you solve the whole thing you're in. Now it's life in you. He who drinks my blood has now eternal life. Now I'll raise him up. And from this generation, you're turned around into regeneration. And you're raised up through the drinking of the blood. So I said, Bruno, Bruno had that very thought now. In the hope that in the not distant future, you experience it. And then hope one day we realize. I've painted that will be realized in the actual experience, but love cannot pass away. Any other question? No, you have told us in two different ways all the time that you seek the murder of the heart. Otherwise, we couldn't understand how what what color we see the reason. Then you tell us that the heart is played upon the heart, it is coming from the true religion. But first of all, what man has not departed from the true religion? What man? If you go to the highest level, call it by any name, so the Pope. If you say the artist of Kenton, if you spoke the highest in the material world, it's not a name of bishops or popes. But they still do have heads in that teaching. When you go to any Great Sanhedrin, they're all the part of the true God because they don't turn within themselves. We see that I am. The fundamental thing is not to believe that I am. Unless you believe that I am He, you die in your sin. And so when they can cross themselves with everything on the outside, for the benefit of a seeming of, they have departed from the truth. They're not serving the one true God. Called by any name, and look at what how they justify it, they are not serving the one true God, the faith of the heart. Another word is used in the scripture for the heart, called the sinner. And when he became the friend of the sinner, that was the prostitute, in the sense that you and I understand the word. And yet, she was the one who wept. And so filled his feet with water. She could wash it when the Pharisee, who was always on the outside, he washed the outside of the cup, that he did not give him water with which to wash his feet when he, the guest, came to die. Yet she came in, and with her tears she washed the feet. And she did, he did not anoint the head, and she with her little. And he wondered how can this man be a prophet? If he were a prophet, surely he would know what sort of woman she is. For he tells him she is a sinner, but he also knows about what sort of woman. He knew exactly who she was. 
And he said, if someone owes 500 denarii, and someone owes 50, and you begin both, which shows the great gratitude? And he said, well, I presume the one who is forgiven the 500. And the answer was, she has sinned much. So she's forgiven much. And he who is the holy the now remain, well, in the same state we was before. But there is something far deeper than what I just said, which we'll touch on one month. You can't stop the flow of tears at a certain level of awakening. You can't do it. You just can't do it. And well, I can't go into it now, it's a long one. But the harlot, the play the part of the harlot, as you told in the book of Deuteronomy, your time has come to speak with your father, you speaking now to both. In other words, it's a beautiful for death. Time to die now. After you depart, they have no visible leader, they are all now so much present. And play the heart with the strange dogs of the land where they go to be among. And they will simply forget my comfort, and in that day I will hide my face. Behind this place, everyone who sees an underdog. Therefore, the man who is not at seeing the risen Christ is still serving, but he knows it not a false God. When I turn to the one true God, so then, he will unveil himself and embrace it. I have returned, having prayed the heart, for we all pray the heart. But even to the part of playing that form of sin, which is called in scripture just the word sin. But it means one who has gone astray sexually with everyone. And he called it a sort of woman. But he was a friend of the sinner. He was a friend of the tax collector. And they called him a wine river and a duck. That's why they were amazed in Germany. They came to leave for one book. That the cold drama that was told him that he did. For they know he did. And he loves the sinner. Who else would he help? came not to serve as a slave to life. They have no need of saving. They are so right, their own mind is right, and they know that because they have money, and those who want God, they're going to say, I have to save you God. You should. I can charge you to go back. And if I do not come, I do not come. The old story in the temple. I am so grateful that I am not a death sinner. While he asked for forgiveness, he was sinner. He knows nothing. So, the eyes of God, all gifts, all things will be forgiven. If you pray the part of the prostitute from now to the end of the day, all forgiven. And those who have not themselves so pure, so altogether good. That they even took up the fall, violent upon themselves, so they could not perform. He doesn't know. But he went astray and played the part because of what? Expected his passion. Expected his passion. But God is all wrong. So condemnation was not. Now, when he came among the sinners, and the one who saw him at the end was the one who said the part of that kind of thing, the prophet. He appeared to her first and appeared to her last. And she came in unannounced to the banquet and she watched his feet with her tail. And when they complained, no one called the bank, no one called the chief. And she watched my feet. Thank you.
like a corner in there and not leave the word. Time, because he wants it. He gave it, he wants it. But that's it, that's it. 